Cobalt. 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 Cobalts. Cobalts. That's how you say it. There we go. So today I want to talk about cobalts. So for some reason I keep trying to say it like a mixture of coal and cobalt. Uh, knowing full well that there's only one L and it's not where my brain thinks it should be. Cobalt actually comes from the Germanic word kobold, which means goblin, because they thought that the poisoning from the ore while mining it was caused by evil spirits. Historically, kobolds are tiny creatures that are mischievous, mean, and usually hard to see if not completely invisible. Going back to the ancient Greek, we have kobolus, which are uh, kind of mischievous pests that they, they dealt with. So really what kobolds are, are ancient goblins, or... Uh, draconic goblins is the way I like to think of them. So with that in mind, I think I've been playing kobolds wrong my entire life. More to the point, I think I've been playing goblins like kobolds and kobolds like super goblins because that's kind of what they are. Kobolds are crafty. They love to tinker, they love to make traps for wayward adventurers, and above all else, they're very jealous and spiteful. They're easily subjugated by those they would consider superior and are often found at the beck and call of dragons and monstrous beings. Mind you that kobolds think half the fun of being subjugated is plotting and scheming to free themselves from the people they just willingly agree to serve. I guess that makes sense, but I don't know. So in kind of the same way, they love to set traps and torture their victims and make them subservient to them. Uh, but if their prey becomes more powerful than they had anticipated, the kobolds will find no shame at all in cowering, surrendering, and serving their new masters. Uh, this is where we get back to my experience with kobolds. I've, I've always played them like trap-happy goblins, wanting to sneak around and pounce on wayward adventures, but then they're prone to spook and just run off and, and try to regroup. I think I missed the inherent power struggle that is actually famously kobolds. So at one point in time, I created a kobold cavalier for an NPC as a one-shot Pathfinder campaign. I wanted to give my players some backup for a dragon fight that I knew was going to be slightly overpowered for them. I thought it would be fun to build this obviously princess and the toad type of scenario with a noble kobold knight who would ride off uh, with the party and prove his love to the princess. But in doing so, I, I made a blatantly lovable doofus that felt absolutely nothing like a kobold. Looking back, I'm sad that, I, that it ended up that way. At the end of the day, it turned out that his faithful mount bandit, the badger, was in fact the prince all along, but it made everybody fall in love with this kind of dopey character that I had a lot of fun playing, but it, it didn't really feel like a kobold. Uh, he rode off into the sunset atop his new pig mount that he had acquired from the, from the stables, and he galloped off out of the story and into the hearts and minds of my players and myself. He could have been any small cavalier, and it wouldn't have made a difference whether or not he was a kobold at all. And I feel like I really didn't get the true kobold experience of it, and it's on my list to kind of remake that character and make it more authentically kobold in the future. To get the real feel for kobolds, we need to look at what they are. Both in Pathfinder and Dungeons and & Dragons, they are small creatures, usually not breaking three feet tall, and while they're incredibly quick, denoted by their plus two dexterity bonuses, they are inherently weak. D&D does this by reducing their carrying capacity and giving them minuses to strength, which is a fairly rare thing to do in 5th edition. Uh, in Pathfinder, they have a whopping minus 4 to strength and a minus 2 to constitution. So if that doesn't tell you something right there about how the they were intended to be played, uh, they're, they're just supposed to be squishy. Like, that's it. Uh, they do have 60 feet of dark vision, but at the cost of sunlight sensitivity. So that's also another thing that could be really fun and challenging for a player that wants to be a kobold. So, so you're just you're tiny and squishy and scared of the light, but uh, at the same time, you're, you're wily and cunning and just really quick to grab things. So when I built my kobold cavalier, I really tried to round him out. I, I wanted him to be small and funny, but I still needed him to do a lot of damage. They do work really well as like finesse rogues or sorcerers that don't rely on their strength very much. But really, what I should have done was embrace that weakness and built the character around that. You know, built him around building traps, about being sneaky. They're very small and deceptive. And, and happy to walk around in the darkness and actually pretty good for a party uh, of large armor wearing creatures. This does mean that you might end up in tight spots from time to time and where there's one kobold that wants to join a party, I'm sure the DM could find a way to make his cousin join the party after a horrible situation. And this brings me back to goblins. I love goblins. Uh, across the board from D&D to Magic the Gathering, uh, they're greedy and they love explosives and it just makes me laugh every time. Think about it because I really think that while kobolds may not be greedy as goblins, they make up for it by wanting to scheme and setting up traps and, and be willing to sacrifice everything to set the trap off on the stupid people that, that could walk into it. 
anything to make themselves feel more superior because at the end of the day, kobolds are weak and they are very aware of this fact and they, they are spiteful that they are the weakest things around. They can be a lot of fun to play because they have different mindsets than most playable races in D&D in the Pathfinder universe. Uh, they are very small and aware of this, but there are just so many of them and they all have the same spiteful mindset. So sure, a goblin will blow itself up from time to time, but usually it's because they it seems like a good idea. Uh, whereas a kobold will blow itself up because it might be inconvenient for you. Overall, uh, I, I wouldn't play on a super serious game, and very specifically, I wouldn't play one without talking to my GM or the other players first. If you, now, if you have a cleric that is constantly trying to keep your energetic lemming of a, of a kobold from throwing itself into danger, or the party has paid a large sum of money to transport a kobold player uh, through the enemy lines on a secret mission, then that... that those are perfect. This might be the right time to play one. Uh, sometimes it's fun to play weak characters. I know it's not all the time that you should just try to make a character intentionally weak, uh, because that can really drag down the, the, the flow of the party or the rhythm of the game. But in certain situations, it might be a lot of fun to have these kobolds join your party. So if you haven't played a kobold, or you haven't seen somebody play a kobold, um, aside from fighting them in combat, because they are a classic monster, it can be a lot of fun to set one up and play one in a one-off campaign, or just as kind of a quick joke for one of your friends. I really like using these kind of characters for people who are just kind of getting learning the game. It's very easy to pick someone like a human or an elf that are kind of generally good at everything, but if you pick someone that is inherently kind of not not supposed to be the star someone who is very much in the background and then let them just fiddle and tinker knowing full well that they character will probably die in the process I, I think there's a lot of really cool campaigns out there right now like we be goblins which is moving in that direction and i think there's some great uh media out there right now with critical role adding <laughs> what some could call a very memorable character in the form of spurt the kobold uh, played by Chris Perkins. Very great job to uh, Matt Mercer and Chris Perkins for playing and making a very, very fun, memorable character. And I hope that inspires people to really start trying some of these kind of off-kilter races. Uh, I want to see kobolds, 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 kobolds. I want to see them played more by average players. They're a lot of fun. They're really easy to build. They're supposed to be weak and, and disposable, and I think that's great. Uh, whether it's a monster or a playable character or an NPC, I, I think there's a lot of opportunity there. So if you have a cool kobold story, uh, drop it down below. Uh, as always, you can follow me on Reddit, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, we're all over the place. I hope you enjoyed the art. If you have art you'd like to share with us, that would be great to drop down below. Uh, as, a as always, likes and subscribes help us a great, bit, great deal. I love making these videos for everybody. And, and the community we're slowly building has been really great. So I, I hope to hear about your stories and your art in the near future. And until next time, it is always better to play games together.